Welcome to Columbia, Pennsylvania. Down here today with a few friends who are behind me. And we're going to be checking out something rather historic related to the railroad. This is known as the Point Rock Tunnel. Now the Point Rock Tunnel was used by the Pennsylvania Railroad, the PRR. And we're going to be going north in that direction behind me there. This area here was a central hub of rail activity. Reading Railroad came here, PRR and other lines. There used to be a turntable here, a roundhouse, a rail yard, multiple lines, and now there still are signs from the past. So directly ahead of us here, this white building with the coffee sign used to be an old depot, according to Nick, and on the other side of the road is an old signal tower. And now there's three lines here. Norfolk Southern does run on them. It passes underneath the bridge. And we're gonna be heading up in that direction. Nick thinks that the turntable roundhouse area was up here, so we may try to look for some ruins or remnants of that. But the trail runs through it now. The rail trail does utilize the tunnel. But I will give you some more information and details about the tunnel once we do arrive closer to it. So if you're ready to see this tunnel and to learn some history, all you need to do is come along with me. Off to my left here over this fence, which is now a yard for trucks and trailers, used to be the roundhouse of Columbia for the Pennsylvania Railroad. Nick was able to find some pictures when it was in operation. I will insert those. Looks completely different now. But you can tell the footprint was here. It's a nice level land, a lot of space, and it's right near the active lines as well. Oh, well, we found evidence of the past. Old boxcar. Pennsylvania Railroad? On the left side, left of the door, above the graffiti. You can just make it out. You can see the line above it and then Pennsylvania underneath of it. Oh yeah. I see it now. That pole's like right in the middle of it. And we got lines closest to us on this side and lines in the distance. But this would have been full of lines as an active rail yard back in the day. Currently standing underneath Route 30. It's a double bridge here. And one of the things that RJ mentions actually goes for an entire mile. And I'm going to show that as we come here up to the fence and you look in the distance. It just keeps going and going and going. Actually snapped a few photos, which you'll see in the photo montage, but it's a pretty neat site. And almost every column is graffitied. I think we might have some train action coming. There it is. Just confirmation that this is a Norfolk Southern line. There is two power units pulling covered hopper cars. We heard that distinct diesel rumble in the distance, sure enough. It's on the far end back there, traveling by. In case you're curious as to where these lines go, so going to the right, where the train's coming from, we'll take you to Harrisburg. The left will be Maryland, I think it's Perryville, Maryland. Is that right, Perryville? Yeah, I was just going all the way over to Perryville. And it's bordering the Susquehanna River, which is just on the other side over there. And that hooks up to the northeast corner. Just to show you, this I believe is probably a spur or a holding line. And nature is reclaiming it, but the unique thing is that this particular line still sees train activity. You want to know how? With Thomas. <laughs> we found him along the way. He's sitting along the road and he's doing his job riding the rails. Oh, oh derailment. So we came upon something rather interesting that I didn't know was here. This is known as the St. Charles Hot Blast Anthracite Coal Furnace from 1854 to 1897. I will take some pictures and share with you, but it is actually still here. And we're gonna go inside of it right now. It is really neat construction. Brick arch here and the big, big stone blocks. And it probably goes about 30 feet high. And I think we could go up right here. Oh yeah, this is really neat. So they all open up and go right into the center. And it's circular in here.
There's even trees growing out of the top of it. You can kind of see. Brickwork, really nice. Built in right with a stone. And up top, it's a combination of brick and stone, different layers of it. So, where do you think there'd be a reverberation in here? But it's very dead. You can see there's actually a rock fall right behind RJ there. Even some metal, like a uh, type of rebar that they used. Even though it's not concrete work, but just gravity has taken over after decades of not being maintained. But the curvature of this is breathtaking. And this brickwork is really holding up quite well. Some people have taken some bricks. And there's uh, some more ruins here. There's a big area here, big wall here. Let's see if we can actually get up on top of it. There's Jake down there. Oh, hey, look at that guy. So here we are on top of it. it. Goes in a circular circumference. Really unique view from up here. And our group grew larger. We got Jake and Becky joining us as well. They rode in from the Rivers, River Trail Marietta Pavilion. This was a nice little bonus find along the way. Still have to reach the tunnel and check that out, but this was really cool. Just to give an update on the line we showed earlier where I was jokingly showing Thomas on the rail saying this line is being reclaimed. Well, we're further down now, a bunch of ties laying across it, 100% not active, and even more so, it does dead end down here. So this is just an old spur or dead end line for holding. The active line is over there where we did see the train for NS. But this spot here officially terminates right here with these stoppers. So when we say we're at the end of the line, 100% we are. Yeah, this looks like a line for holding in the back part of the yard. The yard roundhouse turntable would be up that way on the other side of Route 30 Bridge. All right, so we did find some information on this particular rail. So it has Maryland. Nine tally marks, which is September 1916, and then 125 pounds, 125 pound rail. So these rails were made over 100 years ago and no longer used, but still sitting here and were in use back in the day. Probably has a holding line back here, but very clearly visible, manufactured in Maryland. We have arrived at our destination behind me here. It's known as Point Rock Tunnel. And Nick explained it was constructed from 1850 to 1851 for the PRR and trains last ran through here in the mid 1930s. Now it is part of the rail trail, but it is still pretty much as how it looked back in the day. And we're gonna see just how, lo how it looks compared to individuals walking through, including myself and RJ is making her way ahead of us right now. Now, the one thing that stands out for me is there's no outer covering or construction elements such as concrete or brick. It is basically carved out of a stone mountain. And it looks like it is wide enough for a double line. Yeah, certainly wide enough. And steam locomotives would have came through here on a regular basis. And it even goes around at a Slight sweeping curve. 
I'm guessing this was chiseled out by hand since it took so long. Is that all oh, the drill marks? Yeah, it's probably drilled by hand. I'm not sure if they blasted it or just kind of picked away at it, but it was blasted. Oh yeah, that wall, all the drill markings there. So they went in at an angle, drilled, blasted away, but it took them a better portion of a year. Really neat. I'm going to go to the other end and we'll get a view from that side, seeing how it looks and walking through as well. On this side, you can see the mountain of rock directly above it. Very solid mountain. But over here, though, there is a retaining wall of sorts made out of block stone. May have been a loose area here or capping something off. That's the only thing that really stands apart from being man-made other than the tunnel itself being carved out by man itself. But not every day you see the tunnels curving around. There's this one and the other one I know of is the Rockport Tunnel by Jim Thorpe that uh, Reading Northern uses. That's also a curved tunnel. tunnel pretty cool I think in the future I will have to come down and ride one of my e-bikes through here now I have been on this trail before just on a different part of it closer to the White Cliffs of Kanoi this is a much further down section than what I've ridden on in the past but for me as much as I love this tunnel the old furnace ruins were even more impressive they were relatively intact you know minus some decay and deterioration but beyond that you know we got to explore we got to learn about it and then knowing that it's on the same line as this tunnel, it's pretty fascinating. So I do want to thank Nick for sharing his knowledge with us, learning that this was built in 1850, last used by trains, 1930s. And I also did learn that this was also utilized by trolleys that would have been old Cantonary lines back in the day as well that would have taken you from Columbia to Chickies Rock, I believe, if I had that correct. So to see more videos related to this one, check the playlist down below. And to see everyone else who was here today, just check the description. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and as always, I'll see you, 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 and you in the next video.